Decal Machine supports matching materials that use simple BSDF parameter-based shaders. And if your materials have some inputs that are more complex, you can tweak the decal material a little bit for a better match. Usually just adjust the color and roughness a little bit. But did you know that you can match detail normals too? My base material here uses a node group containing a tiling height map with triplanar mapping that outputs normals. And you can bring this over to the decal material as well. Just copy the node group to the decal material and connect it to the slot used by the detail normal placeholder node. And there you go, your normals are matched. Let's do that again for an info decal too. Assign this material to the decal parent object, then take the normal detail node, copy it over, connect it, maybe lower the intensity a little bit. And there you go, how cool is that? Decal Machine is often thought of as a detailing and finishing tool, especially in the context of game art, but it can just as well be used in concepting and blocking workflows. Panel decals, for instance, can be super useful to imply object or material separations in a non-destructive way. There are different ways to create them. One is the ePanel tool, and if you run it while holding the control key, it will dissolve your edge selection for you, which is useful if you deliberately created these edges just for the panel decal. It's very flexible, and you can easily adjust the type of panel or the width of it at any time, which would otherwise be considerable work if you had modeled this. Another way to create these panel decals is using the Slice tool, which works similar to a Boolean. And let's say you actually want to create a material separation, but you don't have a face to add the material to yet. In that case, you can use the Panel Cut tool to create a mesh cut from the panel decal. This should then be followed up by matching the materials, either using the Match tool to do it manually or automatically using Reapply. And let's also add a second material to the rest of the mesh. And I'm again using Reapply to follow up. Of course, it doesn't have to be a separation at all. A panel decal can also imply a mere surface change like this, maybe. Decal Machine then also comes with a powerful trim sheet toolset that can be used to quickly add complex surface changes in detail with minimal geometry present. You can take this even further then and set up a subset material within the trim sheet. All in all, a super powerful toolset and again, very flexible. Decals in Decal Machine are just mesh objects, and what makes them decals is their material. One of the benefits is that you can edit their meshes just like for any other mesh object. For instance, you can stretch them out like this. This can be cool, especially if you're trying things out and want to quickly get to a certain result. If you later decide you like the stretched out look, then it probably makes sense to create a proper decal for this because the parallax effect tends to fall apart a bit. On the other hand, if you treat decals as details, you should be fine either way. And this is the same decal again, but now I'm stretching it out in the other direction. And just like that, we have three variations of a single decal. Now another benefit is that you can apply modifiers to them too. This one I will mirror over to the other side, and because I use machine tools for the mirror, it will get the modifiers mirror U prop set automatically, which ensures the text remains legible and parallax for normal map decals will continue to work on the mirrored side too. Other modifiers you may want to use are arrays, both linear and radial ones. Any of the many options to set these up will work. And let's mirror all of these over too now. Finally, since decals are mesh objects, you can actually join them together too, which can be useful for organizational purposes. And while you could use Blender's native tools for that, Decal Machine has its own dedicated join tool that's better suited. So all of these decals are just a single object now. 
and it looks and behaves exactly as before. The benefit of using the dedicated join tool is that you can come back later and decide to split it into the original individual decals again. And you can then even retrieve this projected decals unprojected backup too. Did you know that if you do a panel decal and decal machine, you can actually assign an info decals material to it as well? This results in something like this. Did you then know that if you toggle the panel setting for the aircraft library and reload your libraries or restart Blender, decal machine will then assign these automatically and allow you to scroll through them, like through the example panel decals by default? Some people do this accidentally and then report it as a bug, but it's actually a feature. Of course, the aircraft decals aren't well suited for this, but you can create custom decals for this purpose if you want. In my case here, I quickly do it from simple geometry, but you can do it from images you created in an image editor too, of course. Notice that for this one, I placed vertices to block in the dimensions, which then gives me the empty space in the decal to the left and right. I can then manually assign the materials again, or I can create a dedicated library for this add these decals to that library, and then optionally hide it from visibility in the Pi, like the native example panels are also hidden by default. At this point, I can scroll through the new info panel decals among any other panel decals that are registered, and I can of course rotate the UVs or stretch them out, as for any other panel decal too.